All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Aldersgate Online. Uh, my name is Evan. I'm the communications director here. We're so grateful that you spent a part of your Easter morning with us. Happy Easter. Uh, thanks for joining us and celebrating our risen Savior this morning. Just a couple of things before we jump into uh, the worship center. If you're new and you're checking us out for the very first time, uh, welcome. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, but if you're new, you can always go to aldersgate.info. Uh, let us know that you've joined us by filling out a connect card. If you want to take your next step here at Aldersgate, if you've uh, been coming for a while and you just want to uh, learn more about groups or serving or giving, um, you can always go to aldersgate.info. This is where you can take all your next steps. Um, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to pray for you uh, throughout the week and this morning. Um, so yeah, let us know how we can be praying for you. Let us know how we can serve you. And then you can also find out uh, what's coming up here at Aldersgate. Um, we've got a, a several different um, events coming up. Um, actually, this week on Wednesday, we are hosting another Together Night where we come together as a church and uh, share a meal and just uh, fellowship. And we will um, also uh, give you more information on other things coming up. So we can we hope you join us. Uh, for Together this Wednesday night at 6 p.m. You can find all the details at aldersgate.info. Um, we've got uh, summer camps coming up, uh, mission trips, and then VBS this summer. So yeah, aldersgate.info for all your next steps. Uh, let us know that you have joined us this morning, and we'll, hopefully we'll get you uh, connected here at the church. We want you to feel like no matter where you're watching from, uh, if you ever step foot in the church building, look, we want you to feel like you have a church home um, and that you can connect with us. And uh, yeah, we're here to serve you. So let us know how we can do that better. Um, we're going to jump into the worship center here in a minute. Uh, I, I, didn't, I, want, I didn't want you all to miss any of the service this morning, miss any of the worship. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be available in the chat during the service. Um, but if you have any questions or need to uh, get in touch with anybody, talk to anybody, um, we're here to serve you. Um, yeah, you can also text the church uh, anytime during the week. Our, our church number is 806-745-0595. Um, you can find that on our website. But yeah, there's tons of different ways to connect here at Aldersgate. And uh, we're just so thankful um, that you are spending your Sunday morning with us. Uh, this morning. Um, yeah, we're just waiting for worship to start, but I I'll be available in the chat. So let us know um, if you have any questions. Let me know that you're joining us this morning. Um, you can say good morning in the chat um, at any point during the service uh, or leave us a prayer request. I would love to pray specifically for you this week. We have a team dedicated uh, to praying over each request uh, on Sunday mornings, but um, yeah, there are several different ways to get connected here at the church. Uh, there's a lot of different ministry areas that you can uh, serve in. Uh, just know that um, when we serve together, uh, we grow together, and uh, we want you to get plugged in and find a relationship and a role um, because we believe uh, we all have a role to play at church, um, not just in the building, but um, in the community. Uh, Michael, good morning. Thanks for joining us online. Uh, a couple more seconds and we'll jump into the worship center. We had a beautiful morning. Uh, we have a tradition here at Aldersgate to have a sunrise service on Easter out in the parking lot. Uh, they probably started that over 30 years ago when, we, when they first uh, built this building. Um, back then, there was just cotton fields all around, but we still uh, share that, that tradition of, of spending Easter sunrise together. And we had a great turnout because it was, uh, like I said, beautiful weather this morning. Um, so we were thankful for that. Not too chilly, but we're going to jump into the worship center. Uh, worship is about to start, but yeah, anytime during the service, let us know how we can serve you. Um, Y'all have a wonderful Easter morning. Happy Easter! 
What an amazing opportunity we get, right? We get together and celebrate the risen Christ. Amen? We get to sing together. We get to fellowship with one another. We get to enjoy some hot coffee out there. We get to do all of this because Jesus, who loves us so dearly, made the ultimate sacrifice for us. We get to do this. And so I just want to start this morning by giving him all the glory and all the praise. Yes, you did a great job of getting beautiful this morning in your Easter outfits. You look amazing. And yes, that you're all here on time and ready to worship. You get all the credit for that. But man, can we just give Jesus all the credit for exactly why we're here this morning? And so we want to start by saying, Father, above all things... We sing hallelujah. We sing praise you. We re sing, we, we rejoice in you. We thank you, Father, for all of these things. We're just so grateful. We just, we're so grateful. So, so thank you. Amen. I want to share just two quick things with you before we get started about what we do here on Sunday mornings. If you're a guest here this morning, we would love to get to know you through the Connect cards. You'll find them in paper on the back of your chairs, or you can fill out a digital Connect card if that's your preference. We've got, you can text Connect to the number on the screen, or we've even got a QR code for you this morning. And here's why we want to connect. You're going to connect to an actual live living person. Probably Andy or Trent or me are going to respond to you because we we believe that God's call on our life is to do this in community. Amen. Nobody's supposed to follow Jesus Christ alone. Amen. So if you'll fill out the connect card, we'll figure out ways to get you plugged in, plugged into classes, plugged into groups, plugged into prayer opportunities, all the things so that you can do this life in community. For those of you who call Aldersgate Church your home, you have an opportunity this morning to give in the black boxes. You can drop those off. And here's the really fun thing about what happens when you give. Two out of every three dollars that you give goes back out. Can I get another amen? You're like, man, this girl is all about the amens this morning. And I know what? I am. Amen means let it be so. Let it be so that every two out of every three dollars that we give goes out to tell other people what we already know, which is Jesus is our Savior. Now, if you are uh, a guest here this morning, we, we, we don't ask that you give financially. Your presence here is gift enough, and we're just really glad to worship the Lord Jesus with you this morning. We're going to say, Jesus, we praise you for your goodness. Jesus, we praise you for what you did on Friday that we can celebrate you on Sunday. Jesus, we thank you that you had our name on your heart when you nailed, that you were nailed on the cross. We thank you that you knew us by name and that everything that we say about you and everything we know about you is true. We sing hallelujah. We sing Christ is risen.
Amen. Well, good morning. If we haven't met yet, my name is Kylie McCutcheon. I'm the worship pastor here at Aldersgate Church. Um, this morning, we're going to worship in more ways than just music. Uh, we're going to hear some scripture, and we're going to read the word um, as well as sing. So I want you to hear this this morning. This morning, I'm reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, starting in verse 1. It says, But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Church family, we invite you to continue to worship with us and know that God is good. This is a real simple song that just let God know how good he is to you. Very simple song. So you can take it with you just a little bit. Listen. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. That placed me on a rock that stands. And I hold you through the power of sacrifice and lifts me time and time again. Oh my God, so good, you never give up, you never give up on me. Oh, what joy I found because of your love.
never give up, you never give up on me. Oh, what joy I felt because of your love, because of your love for me. Oh, my God, so good. You never give up, you never give up on me. Oh, what joy I felt because of your love, because of your love for me. Hallelujah.
to think you could never be enough for me. Jesus, we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 You may take a seat. Man, it's so good to see you this morning. So glad you're worshiping with us on this Easter Sunday. If we haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is Ryan Smallwood. I had the privilege of being the lead pastor here at Aldersgate. And uh, we're going to talk about hope on this Easter Sunday morning. So I have a question for you. What are you hoping for today? Like, it's okay to say out loud a short sermon. Like, it's okay to hope for that, right? Uh, how many of you are hoping to find the eggs that have money in them later today? Anybody, right? You want to find the eggs that have money in them? Some of you are like, I have to put the money in them. Uh, how many of you are hoping for deviled eggs at lunch today or this evening, right? Is, is that, can we do that? Can you have deviled eggs on Easter Sunday? I love deviled eggs. I think you can have them anytime that you want, right? Uh, as long as somebody will make them for you. Uh, are you hoping, anybody in the room, hoping that your March Madness bracket doesn't look any worse than it already does after today? Anybody, right? Okay. What are you hoping for? I want you to take your Bible out if you brought one with you or a Bible app on your phone. If neither of those, you can reach down there in the seats in front of you and grab a Bible. Uh, go to Luke chapter 24. I'm going to pick up with a story after the story you heard already this morning, the traditional Easter story. I'm going to pick up with a story that happens right after that in the Gospel of Luke. It's often referred to as the Emmaus Road story or the road to Emmaus. As you're finding Luke chapter 24, let me just tell you a little bit about the story, set it up for you. So uh, Jesus has been crucified, buried. He's already risen from the dead. Uh, the women have gone to the tomb on Easter Sunday morning. Uh, they were greeted with an angel's voice saying, he's not here. He's risen from from the dead. Meanwhile, in Luke chapter 24, there's two Christ followers. One is named Cleopas. We get it here in the scripture. The other one, we don't know uh, his or her name, are walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, back to their hometown. They had been in Jerusalem to celebrate the whole Passover thing. Any Orthodox Jew would have done that back in the time. That's why Jesus and his disciples were in Jerusalem and uh, they uh, witnessed all the events that happened. And now they're making their way back home from Jerusalem to Emmaus. It's about a seven mile walk, a little less than half a day. And as they're making that walk, Jesus himself shows up and starts walking with them. But scripture tells us that their eyes kept them from recognizing it was Jesus. Now, we know Jesus stayed on the earth for 40 days after he was resurrected, and he made several appearances during those 40 days. And in almost every one of those appearances, people recognized him easily, the resurrected Jesus. But on this occasion, for whatever reason, they're kept from recognizing Jesus. And I, I'm going to start reading part of the story, verse 17. Um, Sometimes when you read scripture, you just got to laugh because this is funny, all right? So verse 17 of Luke chapter 24, here's what it says. And he, that's Jesus, said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? <laughs> and they stood still, looking sad. Literally, they stopped dead in their tracks. They looked sad. And then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have happened here in these days. So it would go something like this. They're walking, Jesus shows up. They don't know Jesus, this random stranger. He begins to ask them, what are you talking about? They literally stop dead in their tracks, turn and look at him and go, bruh. <laughs> Seriously? Where have you been? How do you not know everything that's happened? How do you not know what we're talking about? How do you not? Everybody's talking about it. Where have you been and how do you not know these things? And look what Jesus says, verse 19. What things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth. Now get this. They said to him, let us tell you about what happened to Jesus. That's funny. Right? Right? Let us tell you about Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. But we had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. But we had hoped. But we had hoped. Past tense. 
four words, probably four short words that arguably convey one of the deepest human emotional experiences possible. We had hoped. I mean, we already know they were sad. Scripture tells us that. But think of all the feels these two guys are in, right? I mean, they've experienced all these things. They're sad. They're probably also hurt. They're probably confused. They may be afraid or scared. They're probably angry. They're lost. They have no idea what's happening. They're going back home, and they have no idea what to do next. They're in all their feels about this. They're literally walking on a road from Jerusalem to Emmaus. But get this, metaphorically, they're walking on a road where hope is becoming dim and despair is overwhelming. You've been on that road, haven't you? You understand we had hoped. We we had hoped the diagnosis wouldn't come back as cancer. We, We had hoped the marriage could reconcile. We had hoped our child would come home. We had hoped the money would last. We had hoped that the promotion would come through. We had hoped that the depression wouldn't last. We all understand the metaphorical road where hope seems absent and despair seems overwhelming. But here's the hope of Easter The hope of Easter is that hope never has to exist in the past tense when we know Jesus in the present tense. Hope never has to exist in the past tense when we know Jesus in the present tense. And that's what's happening here in this story on this road to Emmaus is Jesus is showing Cleopas and his traveling companion that hope is not something in the past. Hope is something that is here today and here tomorrow and here forever because the one who rose from the dead to make that possible is walking with them. And he's walking with you this morning too. So it's not we had hoped It's we have hope. No matter what that metaphorical road looks like, we have hope. I'm going to tell you how in this story from something that Jesus did. So he begins to walk with them, and then look at verse 27. As they're walking seven miles, beginning with Moses and all the prophets... He interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Man, would you like to be a fly on the wall, a fly in the air, right? On the road to Emmaus, he begins to tell them everything about himself. They don't know it's him, and he's telling them everything. This is Jesus telling them everything about himself, beginning in Moses, it says. So can you imagine this? Like, he went back to Moses. They were familiar with the Moses story. It was the Torah. They had it. An Orthodox Jewish family would have had it. They would have known all the story very well. They would have known all the commandments. They would have known everything from that story. And he starts in Moses. Can you just imagine? What if he started in Exodus chapter 6? And said, remember, I promised you, I will bring you out. I will deliver you. I will redeem you. I will take you to be my people. Maybe he jumped into the prophet. It says prophets too. Maybe he jumped into the prophet Isaiah. Maybe he reminded them of Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. that says, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That's me. Maybe he skipped ahead in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 3. He was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Maybe he even reminded the two Christ followers of a promise that they heard themselves from his mouth before he was crucified. The Gospel of Mark tells it to us this way, Mark chapter 9, verse 31. The son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days, he will rise. Can you imagine that conversation? Here's what Jesus was doing. He was giving the two Christ followers all the promises about him. Listen to me. If you're living in a place where it's we had hoped, and you want to live in a place where we have hope, you need a promise to hang on to. 
You need a word from the Lord. You need a word from the Holy Spirit. You need a word from here to hang on to that promise. Listen to this from Psalm 119, 45. I will never forget your promises. They are my only hope. In order to move from we had hope to we have hope, from saying hope is past tense to knowing that it's present tense, we need a promise to hang on to. Jesus gave them the promises to hang on to. But that's not the only thing he gave them. He also gave them a story to remember. He gave them a promise to hang on to, and he gave them a story to remember. Can you imagine, starting with Moses, the story told? Yeah, I delivered your people from slavery in Egypt. They left in a hurry. They got to the Red Sea. They thought they were doomed for sure because all the Egyptians were chasing after them. And then I split apart the Red Sea. And all your ancestors walked across on dry land. And then when the Egyptians caught up to you and started passing through the same channel in the Red Sea, I caused the waters to come back together and they all drowned. Wow, what a story to hang on to. Maybe he told them the story of Jonah. I don't know, I hope so. I like the story of Jonah. Maybe he told them about how Jonah was swallowed up by this big fish and spent three nights in the belly of the well. Do you know the Gospels tell us on two different occasions? I'll tell you from Matthew what it says. Jesus speaking, he said, Jonah was swallowed up and spent three nights in the belly of the great fish. So Jesus will be swallowed up by the earth and will spend three nights in the earth. And then he'll be raised from the dead. That's a story to hang on to, is it not? Let me give you a verse from Lamentations. Chapter 3, verse 22 says, Hope returns when I remember this. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy has not stopped. We too need a promise to remember and a story to hang on to. I love the way the rest of the story goes in Luke chapter 24. They get to Emmaus, their destination, their home. They beg Jesus, who they do not yet know is Jesus, to stay with them, to eat with them. He accepts the invitation. He begins to break bread. And in the breaking of the bread, their eyes are opened and they recognize it's Jesus and he vanishes from their sight. And then they say this, verse 32. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us? on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures. Here's what they're saying. Did we not find hope while we were walking with Jesus, even though we didn't know it was him because he was giving us promises to hang on to and stories to remember? Hope never exists in the past as long as we know Jesus in the present. My prayer for you this morning is that you have your Emmaus road story. On that metaphorical road, you have that promise to hang on to. You have a word from God to hang on to. And you have a story of his faithfulness and his goodness to hang on to. And listen, can I just share with you this morning, if you don't have a promise and a story, or you're struggling coming up with that promise and the story, you're here this morning worshiping a Savior who rose from the dead. That is a promise to hang on to and a story to remember. And he gives us other promises and other stories like this one here. I just pulled out of my pocket a penny. I keep this penny in my office. And the reason I keep this penny in my office is because I look at it often to remind me of a promise that's been given to me and a story that I can remember. You see, I found this penny in my mailbox on a summer day in 2009. I went out to get the mail, and there was nothing in the mailbox but this penny. How did this penny get into my mailbox? I don't think USPS is that generous. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I don't know how it got there physically, but I think God put it there. Because I needed a promise to hang on to and a story to remember. Let me tell you, just a week before this penny showed up in my mailbox, I had read a devotional written by a woman who was telling the story of going to a dinner with her husband's boss and his wife. Now, her husband had just taken a brand new job, and uh, this job was with a company that was a very prestigious company. Uh, it was very well known, and this boss and his wife were very wealthy people. They were very well-to-do, and this woman was 
a little worried about dinner with them because how could she relate to them? This just wasn't her lifestyle. This is not how her and her husband lived. And she was just a little anxious about the evening. They, they met up. They're going to the restaurant. As they begin to walk into the restaurant, the boss stops. He's looking at the ground. He bends down to pick up a penny, picks up the penny, studies it for just a moment. They're all standing there kind of awkwardly. He eventually puts it in his pocket and they walk into the restaurant. Now the woman writes in her devotional, this was puzzling to her, and she was perplexed as to why this man, who was the wealthiest person she knew personally, why would he need to stop and pick up a penny? That penny meant nothing to him. And so finally at dinner, she couldn't stand it anymore, and so she asks him, why did you pick that penny up before we came into the restaurant? And he smiled, and he pulled the penny out of his pocket, and he handed it to the woman and he said, what do you see on that penny? And she said, Abraham Lincoln? He said, true, but what else do you see? She said, a, a year, is the year significant? And he said, no, 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 what else? And she said, oh, it's inscribed on here, in God we trust. And he said, yes, it's inscribed on every coin that you will ever have or see. And he said, every time I see a coin laying on the ground, I pick it up and I read those words and it reminds me that it's in God that I trust. It's not in my company that I trust. It's not in my wealth that I trust. It's not in the people who work for me or the people that surround me that I trust. You see, because one day my company may fail or I may fail my company. My wealth may fail or I may fail my wealth. The people around me may fail me or I may fail them, but God, is always the one I can trust in. Now, I had read that devotional and then this penny shows up in my mailbox. Let me tell you where I was at in the summer of 2009. I was not in a good place. I was on a metaphorical road where hope was vanishing and despair was overwhelming. Just three years prior, I had left a career as a physical therapist to follow a calling to become a pastor, to become a preacher. And three years into it, God and I were having conversations that we had missed this. It wasn't going well. It certainly wasn't going the way I expected it to go. And something must be wrong here. Did I miss this? What am I doing wrong? What's happening here, God? And I took that penny and I remembered that devotional. I said, ah, I'm trusting in myself. I'm trusting in an institution and I'm trusting in people around me. And all those things will fail me, but God never will. And so that day I surrendered to whatever it was God wanted to do. And you know what? He did an amazing thing. That's why I'm here today. But can I also tell you, he didn't do it the way I would have done it. I, I love how the disciples said it in Luke chapter 24. We had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. They're telling Jesus this. And the crazy thing is he did redeem Israel. He just didn't do it the way they were expecting him to do it. You see, that's how it goes with a promise to hang on to and a story to remember. We don't have to say we had hoped, we have hope, even if it doesn't look exactly the way we think it should look. Can I tell you what God did in my life in that season was more than I ever would have asked or imagined. And in the years since, when I've been on that metaphorical road where I've been thinking hope is fading, despair is getting greater, I pull out that penny and I remember a promise to hang on to and a story to remember. And my prayer for you this morning is that you have that same Emmaus Road experience, a similar Emmaus Road experience, that you have a promise to hang on to and a story to remember. So perhaps when you came in this morning, you were handled, handed a, 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 what we call a slap guide. Study, slap stands for study, listen, apply, pray. It's something that you can take notes on today, but also take with you this week and dig deeper into what we've been talking about. If you have one of those, I would invite you to pull it out right now and grab a pen from the seat back in front of you. And, and I would just encourage you to scribble on that piece of paper or any other piece of paper uh, or your notes section in your phone, whatever. Maybe you're on that metaphorical road today. 
can you just scribble it out and say, this is where I'm at? I begin to ask God that he would give you a promise to hang on to and a story to remember. Maybe you're not on that road today, but you have been. And through that process, you have a promise to hang on to and a story to remember. Can you just scribble it out and give God a prayer of gratitude today for that? Maybe you're here this morning and you don't know that hope doesn't have to exist in the past because you don't know Jesus in the present. Maybe today is the day he's calling you to know him in the present. We're gonna take some time for you to do that, to just reflect on that. Here in a minute, we'll have some altar team members, uh, altar ministry team members come forward. They'll be standing here. If you'd love to come visit with them about anything, they would love to visit with you, pray over you. We have kneeling rails on the sides of the altar. You can come just by yourself and kneel and pray if you want to. You can stay in your seat, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna sing a song that talks about a promise to remember. A, pr a promise to hang on to and a story to remember. You can sit and sing that song. You can stand whatever. My prayer for you this morning is that God would give you an Emmaus Road experience. And so God, I just pray that over all of us in this room. I pray it especially for those who are on that metaphorical road today. They walked through these doors this morning and hope seemed nowhere to be found. Despair was hanging heavy. God, I pray today that you would speak into them right now and give them a promise to hang on to and a story to remember. God, I pray for those in the room who've been there, but perhaps they're not on that road today, that God, they would be overwhelmed with gratitude for the promises you've given them to hang on to and the stories that you've given them to remember. God, I pray for the person or persons in the room who doesn't know you in the present and maybe you wanna call them into that relationship today. God, as we sing this song, about a promise and a story. Would you do what it is you wanna do in this place and in our hearts today? We offer it all up to you, the one who gives us that hope. Thank you, Jesus.
of a risen Christ. Can you just give him a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Some ministry is continuing to happen. That's awesome. Just have a seat. Man, I just want to say to you again, we are so honored that you have chosen to be with us this morning. And uh, we would invite you back Wednesday night. And listen, Wednesday night we'll have food. Okay, right? So, just go ahead and tell you we'll have pizza. We have a big thing on Wednesday night called Together. We're going to be in the backyard. It's just a great hangout. We would love for you to come and join us at 6 o'clock, and we'll tell you about what's about to happen. But on Wednesday nights in April and Wednesday, or in April and May, it's going to look a little bit different, and it's all wrapped around a brand new message series that we're going to roll out next Sunday called Household Habits. It's about taking the everyday, ordinary, mundane things of life and finding spiritual significance in them. I'll give you a little preview. Check this out. We all experience the often mundane demands of everyday life. Waking up, the constant commutes, making meals, the bedtime routines. But it's in the ordinary routines of the household that extraordinary spiritual moments can happen. Discover how to recognize the spiritual significance of the everyday and make the household spiritually vibrant no matter what it looks like. Great stuff on Sunday mornings, and then Wednesday nights is going to be even greater. And so show up Wednesday night at 6. We'll tell you a little bit more about it. We'd love to have you there. I just want to mention, too, this morning we have a gift for you on your way out. Uh, this is called uh, Bible Promises for Me. If you need one of these because you need a promise to hang on to today, you'll find them at the Connection Desk out there, the Welcome Desk in the Connections Lounge. Just stop and pick one of these up. It's our gift to you. Uh, also, I know earlier when I asked the question, what are you hoping for today, half of you in the room were hoping for a family family picture today. <clears throat> Females. And so um, <laughs> if you would like to get a family picture, a roommate picture, household picture, whatever, we have two photo drops. And so one of them is right out these doors in the main lobby there. And then the other one is outside, just like right on the other side of that wall right there. And so if you'd like to get a picture together today, we would encourage you to do that. I want to leave you with this from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. We love you guys. Happy Easter. Have a great day.